Los Angeles, home of Hollywood, Universal Studios, Disney World, and traffic. But why? Why is LA so famous and well known for its traffic and congestion? And why do I say, <laughs> when I think about LA? Well, there are many reasons for this, including this, 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 and most importantly, LA's public transportation system is just not good. This is why, for most people, there's no alternative but to drive. LA has a population of 3 million people, and a metro population of over 10 million people. But its public transportation map looks like this. Meanwhile, cities like Amsterdam, Stockholm, and Copenhagen have much smaller populations, with under 1 million people living in these cities, and 2 million in their metro areas. However, they have fantastic public transportation networks that are way better than LA's. I understand these cities are designed differently, but still like LA can't have good public transportation systems, especially since LA used to have one of the best public transit networks in the US, and even to extension in the world. Metro does have a ton of great plans, including Measure M. In this video, I will be reviewing these plans and adding my own ideas and opinions to them. So let's get started with the valley. Now, the San Fernando Valley is made of three main towns, Northridge, Reseda, and Chatsworth. East of the 405 also includes the towns of Van Nuys, Burbank, and San Fernando. Focusing on Northridge, they have bus lines on most streets, however they don't come off and, and they don't go where people want to go. So let's fix this. I think that the bus lines on these streets should all terminate at North Hollywood Station on the Red B Line. These buses should be located walking distance from most people, which is why I place them on these streets. During rush hour periods, they should be every 5 to 10 minutes. And on non-rush hour periods, they should be every 10 to 25 minutes. Nearly all the buses on these streets already exist, so it wouldn't be that much of a hassle, nor cost a lot to upgrade these routes. I also think the buses on these north-south streets should be upgraded to every 10 to 25 minutes. This is for people who want to get between Northridge and Reseda and Chatsworth, like in them, and not like commute outside. If this system sounds really familiar, it's because it's the one used in Toronto. Toronto has very winding suburb streets that have cul-de-sacs just like in the US. However, the difference is they have a bus on a big street that goes by these winding streets, and this bus route is every 5 to 10 minutes during rush hour and ends at either at the end of a of a metro stop or in downtown Toronto. Now there is a bus line on Roscoe Boulevard that goes down Roscoe and then turns onto Lancashire Boulevard which goes to, straight to North Hollywood Station. Now this is a very good bus line except the problem is it takes almost an hour to do this relatively 12 mile journey. In contrast if you were to drive this distance on the same route it would take about 38 minutes. This is pretty slow, honestly, and is not good. It needs to be faster. I think a good idea would be to have a new busway. This new busway would go down the side or part of Van Noes Boulevard, and where it would then keep going until it meets the Orange Line busway, and it would do a curve of road onto the Orange Line busway, and it would go down to North Hollywood. Now before we move on, I want to give a huge thanks to Nandart for creating these incredible videos on Measure M and LA's uh, plans for uh, public transit. They're very good, he made, he made these maps that I am now going to use because they're so good. So thanks Nandart, go subscribe to him. Now he does say in his 2020 updates on LA Metro plans video um, that they might have a busway or but mostly just uh, bus only lanes going from North Hollywood to Chatsworth Station, and this is the route, and yes, this would be very good, and could be a better alternative to my plan, um, but I think that this section right here where it says HI, um, I think that should be a busway and not a bus only lane, because then the other buses that will then be upgraded to more often on, like, Sherman and Victory, um, all of all those other buses, they could turn onto the busway to go to North Hollywood and be faster. 
We should definitely have a bus only lane on Nordoff and Roscoe because those are way more important than lanes for cars. Additionally, on the side of the busway, we need to have a bike path. LA is the perfect weather for biking, and it could be a really good solution because biking is really important and could work extremely well in LA. Especially since most, most journeys in the US by car are under 3 miles, which is a pretty good distance for biking. It's just that nobody bikes in LA because there's, there's no bike lanes anywhere and it's really dangerous. So to recap, I would create one of these plans for the new busway in Northridge. Okay, now it's time to move on to something really important. A lot of people live here, and a lot of people live here. However, there's only two corridors going in between. One of them has a subway on, the red line. The other, the 405, the infamous traffic highway, nothing. Now. After hearing this, you probably think, how could there have no subway line here? Well, the answer is, this is a long corridor, and Metro just hasn't gotten around time to doing it, especially since of the soil and geography, and how hard it is to build subway. But they have one planned, the S line. And this line is massively important. It will be a game changer for everything. It will connect to UCLA, Culver City, and Northridge. This line would be massively important and would be revolutionary for commuters going in between these places because it'd be so much faster. It is estimated that it'll take 16 to 26 minutes to do the since from the Van Nuys Metro Lake Station to either the Expo slash Sepulveda or the Expo slash Bundy Station on the E line, depending on the proposal and route chosen by Metro. This time is great because it's faster than driving with no traffic between these two points. Okay, now I'm going to explain my take on the many routes proposed for the S-Line. Now there's two main ones. One which goes straight through the mountain with a big tunnel, or one that hugs Sepulveda Boulevard and, and what we're going to call Asphalt Land, where the 405 is, and, but then needs a tunnel anyway still later along the line to, to stop at UCLA. Now, here's the thing. I think the first option is better because it'd be faster and, you know, we need a tunnel anyway. But here's why I think the second option is also important and could be good. A lot of people drive on the 405. I mean, like, it has 100,000 cars per day. But if the subway line is built and people who are driving on the 405 are stuck in traffic and don't see the line, they might not know it exists. And, you know, people in LA, you know, they're, they're used to car culture. You know, they, they, they've probably never taken a train in their lives or never know how to use one. So, you know, if a subway line is built, they probably won't use it. They'll probably still drive. Unless it's right next to where they're driving, they see it's faster. Meow. Well, like a lot. And they'll say, ah, next time, I'll take the train. So that's why it could be important and work if we put it next to the 405, but the first option is probably better. Yeah, also because the new, like, big popular news stations like Los Angeles Times and NBC or just any really popular news stations that a lot of people read could just report about it and be like, Hey, this train exists, it's a lot faster and better for the environment, take it! Which is why the first option, to build a tunnel through the mountain, would probably be the best option. And finally, the last planned changes for the valley are the San Fernando Valley Light Rail Line, which goes from Van Nuys Central to downtown San Fernando, and the conversion to light rail on the Orange Line Busway from North Hollywood to Chatsworth, um, and it'll be known as the G Line, and uh, yep. Big ol' thumbs up for those planned changes and extensions to happen. And with that, we're done with the San Fernando Valley, and it's time to move on. Alright, we'll start off first with Redondo Beach and Torrance. Now, the nearest currently existing rapid transit stations closest to Redondo Beach and Torrance are the Redondo Beach Green Sea Light Rail Station and the Harborside Transit Center and Carson Stations on the Silver Line Busway. First, as we can see from Google Maps, there's a single track stretching beyond Redondo Beach Station to Long Beach. All we need to do is electrify and double track the line, and boom! New Green Line extension to Long Beach. I would have the line terminate at either Long Beach Airport or at 
California State University. The line would go down Anaheim Street and have a connection to the Blue A line. Now, most of the single track on this new extension is already built until this area near the port of Long Beach. In order to have this extension terminate at Long Beach Airport or at Cal State University, we will need to have lots of new track along Anaheim Street. Another option, however, is to just have the train terminate at downtown Long Beach Station. But I think it would be better to connect to a new area which has not that many transport links rather than going to a downtown area. And I'd have these intermediate stations. Now Metro is planning to extend the Green Line to Torrance, but I think we should definitely extend it further because in the original plans in 1970 for a rapid transit network, it was planned to have a route that goes from the airport to Long Beach. And I think that's definitely a great route that we should do instead of just extending the Green Line to Torrance. Now, this extension is great. It connects to a lot of new places and adds more connectivity to the area. However, the Redondo Beach area is still sort of far from this extension. First, we should have a really, really good bike lane from this extension to the Redondo Beach area. Redondo Beach does have a very, very good cycling route on the coast. And second, we should have express buses that go from the Harborside Transit Center straight to Redondo Beach area, down Artesia with only one intermediate station at this new Green Line um, extension. It would meet at the Artensia Boulevard station on the new Green Line extension. Now, once the buses um, go with the intersection with Artesia and Ardmore Ave, or Artesia and Hermosa Ave, they would then branch out. Like, let's say one bus would branch out to Manhattan Beach, making local stops there, while another bus will branch out to Hermosa Beach and Redondo Beach, making local stops there. Make it so that people could just hop on like a local bus in Redondo Beach and then it would make more local bus stops in that area. And then once it gets to Artesia Boulevard, it would go straight express fast down the road and you could connect to the green line light rail or the silver line busway. And this, again, does not need a lot of infrastructure required. In fact, no infrastructure is required. We just need new buses. Oh yeah, and these buses need to be at least every 5 to 15 minutes. And finally, we have the Crenshaw Line. And the Crenshaw Line will be great. It will be the first train to fully connect to Los Angeles International Airport, or LAX. However, the project started construction in 2012 um, and was expected to open in mid-2020. And uh, it's still not open. It's been delayed by two years to November 2022. And it, there's supposed to be seven new stations, and like I do understand that many American projects uh, do, especially transit, do take a while to complete. But man, if we want to make a lot more extensions, we might need to speed up the process. Okay, now for Santa Monica. So we have the busway planned that's supposed to go from the uh, Los Angeles airport to um, downtown Santa Monica via Lincoln Boulevard. Um, and it's planned to be a busway, but that will open in 2047. Now, not only is that very long ways away, but they're planning, there's an unknown date for it to conversion into light rail. And what I say is that if you want to make the transit line light rail, don't make it a busway in the first place. Just make it light rail in the first place. Uh, but anyway, if this was a busway, this could work out because I do think light rail is better than bus rapid transit. In most ways, I think it's better, uh, especially because of the economic development and it um, doesn't have rolling resistance, so it's, it's better for the environment. But I think the benefit of a bus rapid transit is that you could actually branch out buses. And Venice kind of doesn't really have any transit connection to the airport, and I think what we could do is... is on Santa Monica's own bus network, Big Blue, which it's great that Santa Monica has its own bus network, Line 1 ends here, and I think we could extend the route to go down Pacific Ave and turn left on Washington Boulevard, and then once it gets to Lincoln Boulevard, it can connect to 
the Lincoln Boulevard busway um, and go to the airport. This is a very good use of bus rapid transit. And Santa Monica, compared to most other places in LA, is very good as a suburb. Um, it, if you consider a suburb, it's arranging a grid formation, making walking very easy. And there's even a pedestrianized street. And its bus network is very good. It has many routes, um, including rapid routes, which I think is great. However, I think a lot of the routes should be upgraded to be at least every 10 to 20 minutes during the day and in rush hour, particularly the routes to UCLA and the one to Pacific Palisades. And that's it for Santa Monica, Redondo Beach, and Torrance. Now we're going to move on to Thousand Oaks. Thousand Oaks, a suburb of 100,000 with terrible public transit. Port Authority, New York, New York. Okay, so I'm now going to explain a bus system that I like to call the Lincoln Tunnel bus system that New Jersey Transit uses coming out of Port Authority bus terminal. Now there are three main tiers that I'd classify these buses as. Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. Tier 1 would have buses that just go through the Lincoln Tunnel to New Jersey. In New Jersey, they just get off straight out of the Lincoln Tunnel and make local bus stops to wherever they're going on streets. I would classify Tier 1 as local. Tier 2 would be a bus that goes through the Lincoln Tunnel to New Jersey, but goes along a highway for a bit and then gets off at a specific area and makes local bus stops along streets in that specific area and, and other specific areas serving those specific communities. I would classify this tier as rapid, and tier three would be straight express, from Port Authority to a transit center area or wherever, straight express. And I think that tier two and tier three could work really well in Los Angeles and specifically Thousand Oaks and other places. The reason why I like this bus system so much is because how simple it is. The majority of these buses serve areas that aren't served very well by the train. The obvious problem with the system, though, is that these buses still get stuck in traffic. Now, they do have their own lane in the Lincoln Tunnel, but they still get stuck in traffic on the highways and on streets. And this is a pretty good reason why the system would not work very well in most places in LA. You know, LA traffic is... just a lot worse. Also, that most places in LA, within the city, have enough demand for them to make an actual transit line. This system could work extremely well in Thousand Oaks, though. And an example route would be one from Thousand Oaks to Oxnard, or Thousand Oaks to North Flywell and the Red Line. Although the traffic on that route can be pretty bad. However, Thousand Oaks has freaking 100,000 people. That's enough people to warrant extending the Ventura County Metrolink commuter rail line and have a branch of it down to Thousand Oaks. This bus system could also work in other places, such as Huntington Beach, where we could have express bus from Huntington Beach to Long Beach or from Huntington Beach to Santa Ana or Anaheim. Oh yeah, Metrolink exists. Yeah, Los Angeles has its own commuter rail line. And it sucks! Okay, I'm just going to say it. Metrolink represents so many things wrong with the American commuter rail. Here are three main reasons why Metrolink sucks that can be applied to other American and Canadian commuter rail, such as Metro in Chicago and Go Transit in Toronto. 1. Metrolink does not own all of their track. According to this 2018 Caltrans rail plan, Metrolink owns 534 miles of track but shares 146 miles with freight and other passenger rail companies. This is better than other rail systems in the US and Canada, but it can cause bad scheduling to be done on the lines. On the Metrolink map, these sections highlighted are all single track only. Not only is this terrible for frequency and on-time performance, but these two sections also have Amtrak trains running on the same track. These sections need to be double-tracked. And the shared track needs to be owned by Metrolink. There's no excuses for this when you are in the second largest city in the US and the third largest commuter rail network in America. 
Two, the stations aren't close to the areas they're serving. There are way too many stations that are not walking distance, not even close at all, to the area's downtown area. Examples are Commerce, Simi Valley, San Fernando, with the worst offenders being Anaheim, which station is nowhere near its downtown, but instead serving the Angel Stadium only, I guess? And Ontario, where Amtrak has a station in its downtown, but the Metrolink station is all the way over here near the airport. These areas deserve better station placements. I'm not asking to demolish these statements and build a better one closer to the area, but to just have another station near it on the line. And some pretty large towns don't have any station connection at all. Donna Point, a popular tourist destination with beaches and resorts, doesn't have any connection to these nearby Metrolink wines. Why? This could all be considered as car-dependent transit, where you drive to a park and ride to take the train. Not Just Bikes has a good video about this in Toronto. According to Caltrans, Metrolink provides 30,000 parking spots, with the majority of them being free. This is better than Go Transit. But this is still a lot of parking spaces, and it's still subsidized because the majority of them, again, are free. We need to make transit more accessible with biking and walking instead of just another car subsidy. And finally, by far, the worst part about Metrolink is the frequency. Metrolink runs strict, rush hour only, peak directional service, that's only point is to bring commuters into the city to work a 9 to 5 job. Now you may ask, wait, doesn't building an entire transit network and only running during rush hour is a waste of time, money, and defeats the whole purpose of the transit network? Yes. Yes, it does. These trains just sit around doing nothing all day. You want to stay late in the city or go to a friend's house for the day? Sucks to be you! Just drive like a normal American, duh. Thankfully, not every line has this schedule. The San Bernardino line is every hour, which is decent for North American standards, but its last trains are not late enough. Most, if not all, of these lines need to be every hour during non-peak hours until midnight. We can't continue making transit a one-type-of-trip scenario. Other minor problems with Metrolink is that all their light locomotives are diesel, there's very little connection to other transit lines, and there's only one station near downtown Los Angeles. These are all excuses. Metrolink in Los Angeles' commuter rail and transit will truly not be great until these problems are assessed. Now, Metrolink isn't all bad. I do think they have great extensive routes, being the third largest commuter rail network in the US. They even have a line that travels on the outskirts of LA, which doesn't end at Union Station. This is really impressive. You never see this type of routing in North America. And Metrolink has a very good, advanced, up-to-date rolling stock, unlike other railroad companies. In conclusion, Los Angeles has some great plans for the future of transit. They're doing a way better job than other cities in America. But these problems need to be addressed, and we can't forget about them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, where I talk about Japan's urban design. Bye bye.